Good morning, everybody. Today I am in Sunset, Texas. I am at Brown Auto Salvage. I was in the area and I thought, you know what? I've heard about this place. I've known them online for quite a while now. So I thought I'd just stop in, see what's up. Got a little bit of info. They've been here for almost two decades. They've got somewhere between three and 4,000 cars here. They're all lined up nice and neat rows. It's not like my place at all. My place is pretty congested, pretty chaotic, but I like it that way because I don't usually sell parts, but they're an actual salvage yard here. They actually sell parts. They sell some whole cars. And so they've got it set up to do that. They're not a recycling yard like we are. They do crush cars from time to time as they get stripped out. But right now, they don't have a crusher here. So we're just going to walk around. We're going to check out what they have and see if there's anything I can't live without. They've got quite a bit of land here. And it is pretty cleared off. There's hardly any trees other than around the edge. Right off the highway. It's a really good location. Check this thing out. What is this? An Oldsmobile? Huh. I never had nothing like this. Must be a 61, I'm guessing, with the wrapper I went although it could be newer and they just used an older glass on it. I don't know. It's interesting, though. They're in a really good spot here because they're far away from the coast, so the stuff doesn't get as rusty. It does get sun-baked, but that's okay. It's a whole lot better than salt rust. But also they're in Texas, so they're a lot closer to a lot more population than I am there in Kansas. So they have access to a lot of cars. That's how they've accumulated so many cars over the years so quickly. Of course, I say that I've had my place for about three years now and uh, I've accumulated almost a thousand cars and I cr just crushed 500. So I guess in <laughs> 15 more years, I'll probably have a lot of cars like this, too. That's pretty cool. I have one of these hood ornaments like this in mint condition that I got from a guy. He had it sitting on a shelf. I didn't know what it was off of, but now I do. It's off of DeSoto. And the old roof rack, that's pretty sweet. They've definitely got some cool stuff here. I'm assuming, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming, oh, what is this? This is cool. I like the fins on this. Don't think I've ever seen a Nash with fins. That's really neat. Yeah, I'm assuming this is their nicer cars that they're gonna sell complete, but I could be wrong. I don't know how they have it organized. Here's a big old Lincoln. 60 i think a flower car cadillac oh we got a train going by so we're gonna hold off on recording for just a second okay now that those engines went by we can record we got mercedes obviously there's no possible way i'm going to be able to show you guys all the cars that are here i'll get some drone shots here in a little bit of the whole place definitely some neat stuff here though There's no way I'll probably even get to see everything here. I've got to head to another antique salvage yard. Not nearly as big, but still pretty big up in Oklahoma after I leave here. And I do want to get home before midnight tonight. <laughs> home is about seven hours from me right now. Eight hours. Eight hours from me. I do want to check these Cadillacs out, though. These are pretty sweet right here. These professional cars are neat and all, but I don't know. I, I, I've sold a few through the years. But unfortunately, I found I've had better luck arting them out instead of parting them out. But another advantage they have is that they've got the people, the manpower to sell the parts, to pull the parts. So they've got a lot more advantages than I do. And I probably could get set up like that, but they enjoy doing this. I don't enjoy selling parts, so I guess it is what it is. Yeah, I don't know what I'd do if I had this many cars. I, you guys probably don't want to know what, what I'd do if I had this many cars. I'd have a lot of fun with a torch, that's for sure. A lot of neat stuff here. So I guess what I'm going to do as I go through all the rows, I mean, it goes on and on and on. All the way back there is I'll just kind of get a few shots here and there. 
And if I see anything interesting, I'll stop and record it specifically. I guess it's all interesting, but if I see anything that's interesting to me, I'm around old cars all the time. So, I mean, it takes something special for it to be interesting to me. Tons of neat stuff. I'm guessing these are more recent arrivals. There's a DeSoto. I always like the hood ornaments on these cars here. But I'm guessing these are more recent arrivals here because the weeds aren't growing up quite as big around them. People always say, how do they find this many cars? Well, obviously they have a larger population here in Texas than we do in Kansas, a whole lot larger. So there's a lot more cars. But even then, you guys have seen me go to these auctions where there'll be 100, 150, 200, 250, sometimes more cars out in the field and they're selling for 100, 200, 300 bucks a piece. And it's kind of the same thing here. The difference is, is that I don't have time to haul that many cars, whereas they do. A lot of times they'll go out and they'll buy 200 cars, 100 cars, 50 cars at a time and haul them in. If I had the time, I would do the same thing. I just unfortunately do not have that much time. As you guys know, our main business is recycling. And so we try to stick local, picking up stuff like this. We get stuff like this all the time and we don't sell parts. So I'm always busy recycling, doing that sort of stuff. So I don't have a whole lot of time to deal with the old cars. You've kind of got to pick or choose. You can't do both. You can't sell parts and recycle. I mean, you can to some degree, but you've really got to be, you've got to really focus on one thing if you're really going to make that succeed. Bunch of square bodies right here, GM stuff. I don't know if they have it organized according to make and model or if it's just kind of everywhere. I didn't really ask that, but just judging by looking at the rows, I'm guessing it's just kind of everywhere. I'm not sure if they have some sort of inventory system or how they do that. I'm sure they do. Maybe they don't. I don't know. I know I have no inventory. Somebody asked, do you have such and such? I'm like, well, I guess I'll go out and take a tour and see if I do. Cummins Turbo Diesel. Doesn't have any of the parts that I need for mine though. I think I'm gonna go ahead and sell my 93. I kind of hate to, got a lot of memories in that truck, but it needs odds and ends just trinket work. And I never drive it anymore. I've got my Chevy now. I, I wouldn't even imagine taking my 93 on a road trip like I'm on right now. Drove all the way down to Warrenton, Texas, then up to Decatur, and then out here to Sunset. Now I gotta go to Oklahoma, and then I gotta go on back to Kansas. So I, I can't imagine doing that. Here's another one over here, but it's missing the parts I need too. But this looks like more late model stuff down these rows here, so I think I'm gonna skip over this stuff. This is what people want me to do, and they always say I should do, is part the cars down like this, to where, I mean, they're just, they sit out here and they part them down to nothing. And I understand the logic behind that, that because I mean, they're not making these parts, a lot of these parts anymore. So I understand why people want me to do that. I just, I just can't do it all. And so life's too short to do things you don't enjoy doing. So that's, oh, that's convertible. Of course, I guess I have a couple of those now that I think about it. But yeah, life's too short to spend it doing things that you don't necessarily want to do. Here's the Corvair row. People always say parts on Corvairs don't sell, but these look like they've sold some parts off of them. I have a lot of people tell me that I should only art them out once they've been parted out. The problem with that is, is that you can see with these old Fords right here, is that once you start selling parts and pieces off of them, there's really no art left. There's no art value to any of these cars right here. A guy might be able to piece several of them together to make one good nose, but honestly, there's just nothing left for what I do. Now for parts value, there's a ton of good parts left on these cars still. That one's got a factory clock in it. Tons of good chrome on these being two-door cars got the radio and other clock i think that's a 53 these 52 to 54 ford cars aren't super popular but stuff does sell it looks like evidently this is where they keep all their late model stuff because it's mostly late model in this area but there are a few old ones mixed in here and there fins i do like me some fins pretty cool got a couple of these at the yard back home not at my yard at one of my dad's yards there we go, 68 Thunderbird. Now we're talking. I do like me some Glamour Birds. You can see how popular these cars are. Almost nothing has gone off of this car. <laughs> They're just not a real popular car. Yeah, the tilt away steering column's gone, of course. I like 67s the best. Just the interior is a little bit more space agey, but it wasn't really convenient to use. And so in 68, which is what this is, they started changing stuff to make it more convenient. Now we're getting into some more old cars again. What's this convertible over here? Is this a Imperial? I think that's an Imperial. About a 62, 63, somewhere around there. That's definitely neat. 
you don't see imperial convertibles that often really or at least i don't maybe you do is that a 60 cadillac that's pretty neat and some more fords and a mercury that's another one you don't see that often is this body style of mercury of course i don't think they made nearly as many mercuries as they did fords and if you really think about it why would you buy a mercury i mean when you could buy a ford if you want to save some money or you could buy a lincoln if you wanted to spend some money why would you go in between and go for a mercury i see another glamour bird i think this is a 69 here this is pretty parted out, so they've sold some stuff off of this one, the bucket seats. Back in the day, the wraparound back seats in these things were worth a fortune, but that's not really a thing anymore. Does it got, nope. That's one thing I do want is the grill emblem out of one of these 69 birds. They have little blue jewels in them. They're pretty cool. It's probably my favorite thing about the 69 models is that little Thunderbird in the front of them. I guess we'll start walking down this way. Like I say, there's literally no way I can show you everything that's here. But we're going to show you a bunch of it, that's for sure. It's probably going to be a pretty long video, so if you want to see some old cars, buckle up and grab some popcorn. I cut my teeth crushing these things. These things used to be everywhere. Used to buy one of those a week. Old Skyhawks. Some of those got the little uh, four-speed in them. There's another one. Yeah, when I was a kid, most of what we crushed was stuff like that and like that. This type of stuff here stuff out of the late 70s through like the early mid to eight, mid 80s i crushed probably 35 million of those things right there things like that now that we crushed a lot of old cars too we crushed out of volkswagen salvage yard one time that had a whole bunch of these crushed them all split window bu uh, buses and everything not bugs but buses even back then we weren't crazy enough to crush a split window bug but you know back in the 90s old cars really didn't have any value Unless there was something super rare. I think we had a 68 GTO convertible one time. And I think we finally managed to get 1500 bucks out of it or something like that. No, now that I think about it, we only got 800 bucks out of the car. I mean, it was a rough field car, but still, they just weren't worth the money back then. Another Glamour Bird, another 69. Emblem is gone. Anything else good? This is kind of a rare one. It's got the bench seat in it. You didn't see that too often on Thunderbirds. Got a lot of good parts on it still, but none of the parts that I need or want. Hopefully I can find me a hood ornament out here today. That'd be pretty cool if I could find one. I'd buy a 67 or a 69. There's a good couch. I love thin couches. And see that car there is pretty rusty. So that actually probably would be a good one to cut up for a couch. There's a Tri-5, I think. That was something else we used to get all the time for scrap was Tri-5s. It was unreal how many of those things were out there. We hardly ever got Buicks or Oldsmobiles or stuff like that. But Chevys, man, we got those all the time. There's a Sharp 53. You don't see 53s that often. I can't believe the grill's still in that thing. It's a little bit of surface rust on it and pitted, but still it's not completely rotted out. Check out the Buick. That's a sweet grill right there. Buicks had some good looking grills. But in my opinion, now everybody's opinion is subjective. In my opinion, the whole rest of the car is kind of ugly. But man, the nose of them are sharp. It's kind of like a poor man's Cadillac in a way. Two-door Nash. What is this thing? I don't know what it is. It doesn't have an emblem on it. So I don't know what it is. If you know what this is, let me know in the comments. It looks like it's been customized a little bit, so maybe that's why I don't recognize it. Huh, it's definitely interesting. Kaisers, Hudsons. More Buicks, Studebakers. You name it, they've probably got it. Definitely check them out if you're needing vintage parts. I have people email me all the time wanting parts, but I just don't have a whole lot of time to pull parts. So if you need parts, this would be somebody to contact and see if they have parts. It's Brown Auto Salvage. You can look them up online. I'm not going to give their phone number out just because if they change their phone number, this video is going to be out there for a long time. So people will be calling the wrong number. But if you look it up, it should be the accurate and real-time phone number. 
bunch of Studebakers all through here. They go on and on and on. We're out right next to the highway right now, so it's a little bit loud. I don't know if the, ca the uh, microphone's picking that up or not. But it's a really good location because it's right next to the highway, but you can't hardly see this place from the highway. There's a set of railroad tracks in between. I kind of like that. My place, you can see it plain as day from the highway. You can see it from the road out front. There's no hiding. Yeah, now we're into the old cars. We left all the new stuff behind. You guys don't watch my channel to see late model stuff unless it's going in the crusher. Row after row after row. Check out this Cadillac ambulance. I used to know where one of these was sitting. Just like this. Different color though, but it was nice. It was a real nice car. Hardly any rust. I think he wanted 800 bucks for it. But that was just way too much money. Back in those days, we were buying cars for 50 bucks a piece. Now everybody thinks I'm cold and heartless and that I don't see the value in things and that I just crush everything, but I definitely do see the value in things. Like this car here. Can you imagine how hard it would be to find this piece of chrome for one of these cars? I mean, if you needed it, there's probably not that many people that will ever need that chrome. But if that one person did need that chrome, where else are you gonna find it? This old coupe here is kind of neat. It's got some good rear or workable rear fenders. Now everybody says, oh, you can buy brand new fenders for these cars. And a lot of them you can, but they're either fiberglass or they're metal that doesn't fit right. And so honestly, a lot of times you're better off taking your original fenders, fixing them and putting them back on. And a lot of people do that. They'll buy brand new metal fenders, just cheap stamped ones, and they'll use them for patch panels. But even then the metal thickness is different. So these old original parts, if you're set up for it, are definitely worth saving. He's got a lot of professional cars out here. Limousines, ambulances. There's a cool one over there. We'll go check that out here in a second. Bunches of them out here. See, that's one thing you just don't see that often in Kansas. I've got a few of them, but you don't see them that often, really. Is this another Cadillac? We had a Cadillac just like this. And back in the 60s, a blues band bought it and painted it purple. That's what they toured in. It was a really sharp, complete car, but I think we were asking 500 bucks for it back in the day. Nobody wanted it. And the guy came out and cut the uh, back end of it off for an entertainment center. Still have the rest of the car. One of these days I need to finish cutting the rest of it up. That's my thing is when I cut them up, stuff leaves fast because that's hot right now. Super hot right now. And I'm all about going on to the next thing and going on with life. Check out the fins on this 58. Me personally, I like the 58s better than the 9s and 60s. As far as the trunk goes. Now the rest of the car, I think the 59s and 60s are a little bit cooler. But the trunk section on a 58, in my opinion, is one of the best. Two-door hardtop. A lot of good chrome on that one. Does this have the spare tire? Nope. This is a little bit too new. Some of these old... Uh, well, that's not even a Valiant, is it? That's a Lancer, so never mind. Some of your old Valiants have a spare tire imprint on the trunk. It's kind of cool. I'd love to have this much land, though. I don't want to take my trees out. Check out this chop top. Someone put a lot of work into that just for it to wind up at the junkyard. But yeah, I don't want to take my trees out because I do like trees. Honestly, if I had to pick between cars and woods, I would go for woods. You guys have heard me say that before. I'm just a woodsy type person. I like to explore. I do cars because I know how to do cars and I know how to make money with cars. But if it ever came down to it and I had to pick one or the other, I'd go get a job and crush all the cars and keep the woods. Good stuff in here though, that's for sure. And see, the cool thing is nowadays with 3D printing, if you guy really wanted to, you can make some sort of taillights for this car here and go ahead and cut that trunk off. Make a couch out of it. There's another 60 or 59. I think that's a 60, I always get confused. To me, they look so similar. This is an oldie but a goldie here. This is definitely a neat one. Cadillac. It's kind of a shame, but I mean, Cadillacs used to be the staple. If you drove a Cadillac, you were something. But nowadays, I mean, everybody drives a Cadillac. They re really devalued them. I was glad GM kept the Corvette as a, a really cool symbol especially the newer Corvettes. I mean, you may not like the styling, but you can't deny the fact that they are a, a symbol still. You know, Mustangs and Thunderbirds, Ford kind of let those go down. Cadillacs went down in value, all that sort of stuff, but at least some of them hang on to it. What do we got here? 
Studebaker. I do like this one. This is a cool car. What is this? The President. Yeah, this is definitely a neat one. I think we crushed one of these when we crushed out the Studebaker Salvage Art here a couple years ago. But it was not nearly this complete. It was pretty well stripped out to a bare shell. That's a good looking car, really. I mean, it's probably honestly, money-wise, it's way too far gone. You'd be better off finding one that's more complete and then using parts off of this one. But you can't deny that that's a good looking car right there. Onward and out. Got a few old trucks in here. Oh, that's a long bed step side. You don't see those too often. I've had a couple of them through the years and I sold every bed I had about as fast as I got it. This must be the truck section here, the GM truck section. It's just amazing to me how far they cut some of these things down. Back home where I'm from, you would never dream of cutting all this stuff off of a square body. You can find them so rust free, so easy that cutting a roof off of a cab, why would you do that? Just throw the whole truck away, get a different one. But every market's different. And if you're willing to palletize and ship stuff, you can reach out to markets all over the place. But let me tell you, palletizing and shipping stuff is a lot of work. I've done it a few times. I'm honestly not really a fan. I'm okay with pulling small trinket parts if I have time and packaging those, but the big stuff. Now back in the day, you could just strap it to a pallet and go on with life, but nowadays it's not quite like that. There we go, is this? Oh, it's broken. I need a good grill for mine, but this is broken right there. You can buy them brand new and maybe that's what I should do. They're only $220 brand new. But they're not good as not as good of quality but i am just going to be selling the truck so i don't know we'll see some old ford trucks there we go now we're into the good trucks the dodges i did see he has a crew cab dodge up front but it's pretty stripped out i was gonna go check it out here in a little bit i wonder if he has any 59 or 60 internationals here's one here but i need big truck and this is a one ton so it's different i don't need that much but i've got that crew cab that I could use a few parts off of. Or I could use a few parts for, I mean. Yeah, this is a B130 here. I need a B150 or 60. I thought it had one good headlight ring on it. I was gonna ask him how much, but that one's broken too. We'll keep our eyes out. I definitely could use some parts off of one of these. I've got a couple B150s and 160s, but most of my headlight rings are broken. They break really easy, so. We'll see if he has anything out here. Isn't that the way it goes? One part you need and you go to a place of three or 4,000 cars and they don't have the one part you need. <laughs> That's the way it always goes. But that makes it fun. You gotta hunt for it. Toyota Helix. Honda CVCC. That might actually be a Civic there. They were a CVCC at first and everybody pronounced it Civic. Here we go. Here's some unusual ones, some little Fiats. Bertone. I'm probably saying that wrong. Then we got a fishbowl. That was another one. Used to get those all the time. It's just amazing how times change. When I was a kid, probably the most common cars we got was your mid 80s, like your Cutlass Sierras and uh, your Pontiac. Is it 4,000 or 6,000 or something like that? Chevy Celebrities, Ford Tauruses, stuff like that. That was the most common car we got back in the day. But now you don't even see those. Nowadays, what we get, we get a lot of Malibus and Impalas, like mid 2000s. Just funny how times change. Sometimes it makes you feel old. I'm sure a lot of you watching this are like, you don't even know old Silas, you're only 33. <laughs> but there's times where we get in cars that, I remember those being brand new cars when I was a kid, and now I'm crushing them. Like I always thought the, uh, the second generation Intrepids were so futuristic looking. And now, honestly, we don't even get them that often because they're getting so old. There's a few more late model cars up through here, so we might swing through there here in a little bit. For right now, though, we're going to keep going out here through the old stuff. It's got a lot of Lincolns and Cadillacs. I noticed that. Maybe it's just because those stand out to me. I don't know. Oh, check this out. Let's go over here. This is a nice one. I like the styling on these. I thought it was a pretty cool. And now I don't really like the front ends. But the back ends on these I've always liked. I thought it was a neat design. I'm surprised they're not more popular than what they are. He's got three of them in a row. That's one that I don't have. I've had them before, but I don't have any right now. I've got a couple of the Grande style. Yeah, these are sharp cars. 
if I had my trailer, I'd ask him how much for the whole side of that car. That'd be kind of cool to hang on the fence. But such is life. Let's keep exploring and see what else we can find. I'm hoping that sun stays behind the clouds because it's a lot warmer in Texas than it is back home. There's an international. I'm kind of in the middle is the bad part. I don't know how I wound up in the middle. I guess we'll skip over here and then come back. Is there anything? Bad thing is, is the 57 and eight look the same from the back. You can't tell till you look at the nose of them. This is a 59 or 60. And it's broken, identical to the other one. Actually, no, this is the same one. How did I wind back up over here? See guys, I'm getting lost. <laughs> I don't even know how I did that. Well, that's embarrassing. If I was smart, I'd edit that part out, but I'll leave it in. You guys always want to see bloopers. So there's you a blooper. Anyway, going on, we'll just pretend like that didn't happen. I'm kind of shocked at this point in time, I haven't found anything that I need. You guys know me, I, I like to go to places and say, I'm not gonna buy anything, and then I wind up loading my truck. But so far, I'm about halfway through, and I've managed to not load anything into my truck. I'll have to ask if they have a pile of hood ornaments somewhere else. They might have taken them off already and put them inside so they don't walk away. I'm just kind of panning back and forth a little bit so you guys can kind of see what's here. If you see anything you can't live without, you can contact them. They do ship stuff, they pull it and ship it. Check out this car, I like these. I actually have one of these in the building. I'm sorry if the wind noise is a little bit out of control. Usually this mic is pretty good, but of course it's pretty windy today, but this Oldsmobile here, I've got one just like this. Man, and I need a piece of chrome for it too. It's a four door sedan just like this. Oh, and I can't remember which chrome piece I need. I think it was one of the back window chrome pieces. Now I want to take a picture of this car and when I get back home, I'll see what it was that I needed. See if I can buy it because it's a pretty sharp car. It's missing the motor, but other than that, it's got really good patina on it still. I think I could sell it, especially if I could find the missing chrome. This side's kind of messed up, so hopefully it's the other side that I need. So I just went back through my pictures and I found a picture of the car and the piece that I'm missing is that piece right there. Now this one's here, but it's really damaged. If I was fixing the car for myself, I would go ahead and buy that piece, but since I'm selling the car anyway, I don't feel like that's gonna add any value to the car. So, I don't know. When I get back home, I'll double check and make sure. Check out the wagon. 58 Chevy wagons are pretty sweet cars in my opinion. I like them better than I like 57s and 59s. Really, I think 58 was a good year for cars. There was a lot of good styling in 58. And a lot of people overlook them. And so you can get them a little bit cheaper than you can get 57s and 59s. I don't know why that is, but I'm kind of that way. I like a lot of the oddball stuff that other people don't like. There's a Dodge. Now that I look at it, this is a Ford. This ain't a Dodge. This is a 56 Ford. 56 Ford had very similar styling to like 57, 58 Dodge cabs. It was a one year only cab for Ford. Dodge used that cab for I think four years, something like that. The front ends are radically different, but the cabs themselves, in my opinion, look pretty close together. It doesn't have that many grain trucks. See, where I'm at in Kansas, cars aren't that common, but grain trucks are everywhere. Just because that's what all the farmers have. They have pickups and grain trucks. They don't have any reason to have cars. You can't use a car to work and haul grain and haul cattle. Which way should I go? I guess we'll go over here. We'll check out all these back here in the back first, and then maybe we can go back up. What is that? Is that a Dodge? I think it is. These are thorn bushes here. I was gonna go check them out a little bit closer, but with the thorn bushes, I think we're gonna pass on that. But this one even has the passenger mirror on it. That's pretty sweet. There's an old Plymouth ship hood ornament. I've got a handful of those already though. I don't need more. This looks like a lot of Mopar stuff in here. There's a Chrysler back there. I do need a chrome grill for a 
65, six or seven, but that's not a chrome grill. Is that a Dodge box truck back there? We might have to brave the uh, thorn bushes and get back there. Oh, I see a crew cab. There's a crew cab right there. If we can get over there. You guys know I'm gonna have to brave these thorn bushes to get to it. I'm just trying to see what, oh, it's a 68. I can see the grill now, so it's a 68. Maybe a 69, it's kind of hard to see. It's kind of overgrown. Definitely a cool truck though. I wonder how rusty it is. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Oh, there's a, a window panel. I don't know what they're called. It's like a Suburban, but it's a Dodge version of a Suburban. Those are pretty rare. That's pretty sweet though. Oh man, the things I do for content. Ouch, whoo -ee. You talk about pain. It doesn't look that rusty. That's pretty sweet right there. And I'm not gonna go any closer. These things are tearing my legs up. But check out that Dodge there. You know, don't hate me for saying this, but I think it would be really cool. You guys have seen my 57 Ford panel uh, trailer that I have that somebody cut the front off of. I think it would be really cool to take one of those right there that have the windows in it, cut it off and make a trailer or a camper or something out of it. Now that in there looks too complete to do that too, but if I ever find one of those that's kind of stripped out, I'm already known I'm gonna do it. Short bed. That's pretty sweet. I noticed a lot of these Dodges back here are pretty complete. So I'm wondering if he isn't keeping these or something. I don't know. Because right now these trucks are hot. And so if he was to advertise that, I know it would sell fast. So maybe he's hanging on to it. Or maybe he's like me and he just doesn't have time to do everything. <laughs> Been there, done that. I've got lots of stuff. I know it'd sell for good money and it would sell fast. I just ain't got time for it all. I think this is a 70 or 71. Pretty cool truck. Dodge school bus. That's pretty sweet. I've got a Dodge School Bus, a 61. It's not quite that big, but it's still a neat bus. You don't see Dodge School Buses that often. Usually, most of them that I've seen have either been International or Chevy. You do see a few Fords every now and then, but I think Dodges, in my opinion, are probably the most rare, at least where I'm from. Well, I think we have that row there, this row here, and that row there still to go down, so I'm not sure where to start. So I guess maybe we'll just kind of weave back and forth. Chrysler fins, I like fins. See that in there would be another good one to make a couch out of because it's it's not that rough, but it's still pretty rough. It's still enough there you could build it. Although that trunk lid, somebody might need that there for, for their car, so I don't know. It's too far for me to go to be buying stuff like that anyway. If it was already off laying there, I'd buy it and throw it in my truck, but I ain't got time to cut it off today. Another Dodge truck. There's a Tri-5 wagon. A Ford wagon, oh, a Peugeot wagon, an old one. That's unusual. You guys always give me a hard time because I pass over the really cool stuff and go look at stuff like this. <laughs> it's just something you just don't see, I don't see very often. So to me, this is interesting. You guys are like, why are you stopping and looking at that when there's 75 million other cool cars around it? Oh, there's a, is this a 60? This has got the big old fins on it. Oh, I wonder, I wonder, wonder, wonder if that chrome is the same as a station wagon. No, it's not. I can tell already it's not the same. So I've got that station wagon. This may not be a 60. I think this is a different year. I'm not an expert on these, but I've got that 60 station wagon that I need the chrome that goes on the very back of the fence to make it more complete. But that would make a sick couch. That's for sure. <laughs> the guys out here are going to watch my video and they're going to like stop saying all my cars would make good couches <laughs> a lot of car guys and salvage guys tolerate what i do with cutting stuff up but they're not really a fan of it another cool couch there's an old panel old hudson's Well, I didn't see any 67 Thunderbirds yet. There might be some over there that I missed in those middle rows. We'll go back over there, but that's a bummer. Oh, right here is what I was talking about earlier. There's one right here. These are so cool. I've got one of these already, so I don't really need another one, but check that out. That is such a cool design in my opinion. I don't know. We'll see. I might need another one. I'll think about it as I'm walking around. I might ask him how much he needs for that deck lid. 
to get these off you have to drill out the lock cylinder open up the trunk or you can crawl through the trunk I'm not feeling that rambunctious today plus it's all still together but I might ask him how much for this deck lid because I make a really cool wall hanger yeah there's another one there that doesn't have the spare tire thing on it though such a cool idea that they had back in the day rows of rust although the cars here aren't that rusty like I was saying it's quite a ways away from the coast and they don't have trees quite like we do back home it's not quite it's humid down here but stuff rusts in a different way than it does back home so there's really a lot of good sheet metal here still there's a 65 to 7 dodge not a chrome grill though another station wagon Oldie but Goldie's over there. It's gonna be really cool to get some drone shots of this place. I'll check this out. This van over here. I've got a really cool idea I'm gonna do with an old van like this out of the 60s. I've already got enough vans, I don't need another one, but I'm gonna do something really cool. I'm not gonna spoil the surprise yet, but probably this winter. But I like the roof on this thing. That make a sweet camper right there. I've seen those that are complete. And the ones that have the pop-up roofs on them are really cool too, that the roof pops up on. I actually have a Volkswagen that has the pop-up roof, but it's buried way in the back where you can't get to it. There's a ram head. I like the little bit, uh, I think it's actually a little bit newer ram head. I think it's a 53 that I like. Packard. Does this have the little doohickeys on the back? Yeah, it does. Those are kind of neat. I might have to ask him on those too. Oh, of course, there's never a full set of six, but there's five. And I think I have one or two loose ones back home. So yeah, I'll take a picture of those and think about it as I walk around. I've had a lot of reactions on my Mercedes video I posted a while back. People saying I can't crush those cars. So I told everybody I'll give them a small chance. And if people want to save them, they can save them. If not, next year, Sometime I want to cut those things up So I told everybody put your money where your mouth is We'll see if anybody does is that a Barracuda that is a Barracuda That's one thing I haven't seen any out here yet, but here's one right here Ooh Barracuda Does it have to no, the glove box is gone these have a really cool Barracuda logo on the glove box But that one's gone I notice a bunch of these have the roof cut off of them. Of course, when you go down by the coast, a lot of times the roof, they rust from the top down. So the roofs rust out really bad down there from all the salt rain. Well, it's not salt rain, but the salt in the atmosphere and the rain, humidity, all that stuff. I've sold a lot of truck roofs to people down along the coast. Another Cadillac. Is this another flower car or is this just a homemade job? This is just a homemade job. They did it kind of an interesting job to it they move the back window forward box it all in turn it into a pickup it's even got the doors on it so they can open them up for storage it's actually kind of a neat idea necessity is the mother of invention huh see now here's an actual flower car what is it, an imperial that's pretty sweet chrysler imperial Yeah, this is an actual coach built flower car here. That other one was just some homemade job, but they, like I say, they, they did a halfway good job of it for just doing it in their garage probably. Okay, I'm getting too close to up here. I'm gonna miss a bunch of these cars. So we're gonna go back out here. We'll go down this other row. Oh, for a second, I thought this was an Edsel convertible, but the, skin, the skin's gone off the roof. So never mind. I was gonna say, that'd be something unusual. Bunch more Cadillacs. Is that a Morris Minor over there on the back of that truck? We'll walk over there and see. Maverick, Pintos, Mustangs, Pontiac Convertible. Some more Lincolns. It, it, he does have a lot of Lincolns and Cadillacs. 
He definitely does. At first I thought maybe it was my imagination, but there's too many of these out here. He definitely has a bunch of them. Well, there's not too many of them out here. You know what I'm saying. There's too many for it to just be my imagination. But that's okay. Lincolns and Cadillacs are hot right now. That is a Morris, isn't it? Huh. Don't see those too often. We've got one, but it makes this thing look like a cream puff. Well, he's got two of them. Here's another one right here. I didn't even see it. I was so busy looking at that one. Huh. He's got three of them. I take that back. <laughs> Yeah, little, little European cars like that aren't popular in Kansas. I've got a Hillman that has almost no miles on it because a guy bought it for his wife and she said, you bought me this? I ain't driving that. And she parked it up behind the barn. It sat since 1953. People were embarrassed to drive stuff like that in Kansas. Yeah, I think we checked those cars out, but I think we missed these over here. So we'll go back through here. Check out the roof line on this Rambler. I've seen these before. I've got a sedan one of these, but I've never noticed this roof line. It's like a flat top haircut. <laughs> That's pretty cool though. I do like that. Huh. I've got a bunch of wagons and people probably think I'm crazy, but what I think I'm gonna do with them is turn them all into campers, cut them off up here and just make them into campers if they're a nice wagon obviously i won't do that but i've got a lot of just rough wagons there ain't much left of them but there's enough left to do what i want to do oh here's another mopar nope no spare tire on it another value see this is a little bit newer valiant once again i think so it doesn't have that maybe it's the other way around i don't know you tell me is it the older ones have the spare tire or is it the newer ones have the spare tire here's another glamour bird 69 We'll see if it has the hood ornament on it. Ouch. Ow, oh, thorn bushes. Man, if I go through these thorn bushes again and this doesn't have the hood ornament or the grill ornament, I'm going to be sad. Ouch. 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 Oh, oh it's gone. Bummer. Ooh, check out that hood ornament, though. That's pretty sweet. What is that, a Kaiser? A oh, Fraser. That's a Fraser. That's a pretty sweet one there. It's really rough, but it's not broken, it doesn't look like. Well, the tip of it's broken off. And the plastic's all broken, but it's got a lot of pitting. But, you know, just for a decoration piece, that's pretty cool. That's another piece. i got to take a souvenir home, so I've got a few ideas now. And there's no Camino. I was just thinking, you know, it's kind of interesting. He doesn't have hardly any El Caminos. I've seen a handful of Rancheros, but maybe I missed the other ones, but there's one right there. Oh, there's another one right there. So maybe I just didn't get to the El Camino spot yet. There's another one right there. So yeah, I guess he's got quite a few of them. Never mind. Once again, I embarrassed myself. I spoke too soon. Riviera. That's a pretty sharp car. It's got a lot of good parts on this one still. This must be a pretty recent arrival because it's not stripped out hardly at all. I do apologize for this audio if it isn't the greatest. Super windy. There's a highway right there and there's some train tracks right there. So <laughs> it's the trifecta of bad things. At least I'm not walking through crunching leaves. When you walk through crunching leaves, it makes it even worse. Oh, here's a Mopar wagon. That's kind of neat. Not the right year for what I need though. I know they go to a lot of auctions too and buy a lot of stuff because I see them posted on Facebook of them going to auctions and buying cars. So they kind of do the same thing I do just on a bigger scale and they'll travel longer distance than I will. If I'm driving two hours to go get a car, it better be something I really like or it better be super cheap. But when you do this for a living, you've got to drive. You have to, you don't have a choice. If you don't get new inventory, you go out of business. I've seen a lot of salvage yards, they'll buy, you know, two, three thousand cars. They'll sit on them, they'll part them out over the course of 20 years, and then at the end of 20 years, they never bought any new inventory, so what they have is all stripped out. 
Then what do they do? They just have a crusher come in, smash it all, and sell the property. But if you want to keep a yard going, you've got to keep inventory flowing in. That's why I'm always out buying stuff, is I don't really have a yard, but just for the sake of having fresh stuff there to keep people interested in content for YouTube and things like that, I've always got to go out and find fresh content. I could sit around the yard and tinker around every day, put a video every day, but pretty soon those type of videos would get old. Yeah, he doesn't have much for international, it looks like. But like I say, this isn't farm truck territory. Not a lot of farms around here. He was telling me that a lot of times, they'll just buy a whole property, land and all, clean the cars off, and then sell the property. You don't do that in Kansas. This property is too expensive. What happens is if somebody buys the property, has a bunch of cars on it, they say, get these things off of here. And you go out and you have to get them off in a week and you don't have time to be nice with them. So they wind up getting destroyed. I think we walked past this car already, but what is this? I didn't notice it the first time. Aronde 1300. Aronde, Aronde, I don't know how to pronounce it. Oh, another Glamour Bird. This is a 68. See, 68 does not have a grill emblem because it has one in each headlight. There wasn't one in the middle. And then 70 and 71 had a big beak on the front of them because the guy that worked for Pontiac came to work for Ford instead. Yeah, those tilt columns are gone out of every one of these birds, which is expected. That's a pretty popular item. Are these the plain Jane hubcaps? Yeah, I've got a bunch of those. Don't need any more right now, anyway. The one good thing about the wind today is it is blowing out of the south, so it's gonna push me to my next destination. So instead of getting 22 miles a gallon, I'll be getting 24 or 25 miles a gallon. There's some more El Caminos. So yeah, I definitely spoke too soon. Now that I think about it, we came down this row, but I was busy looking at these Mustangs, so I didn't notice these over here. So I think we're about done in this area. We got a bunch up here around the building, and then there's that really cool Dodge Crew Cab up there I saw at the front. So we'll head up there, then I'll get my drone out and do some flyovers. So this one is a Dodge for sure. You can kind of see how similar it is to a Ford, 56 Ford. But this is definitely a Dodge here. As you can see, the dash is radically different, but the basic shape of the cab and windshield, pretty similar. Bunch of late model cars up here again. I guess I didn't realize they sold late model parts too, but it does make sense. I mean, selling nothing but vintage parts, there's not, I mean, there is a lot of demand, but at the same time, there's not always that much demand. And so it'd be hard to pay the bills if that's all you did. But if you sell late model stuff too, you kind of hedge your bets a little bit. It's really, it's a good idea. If you're gonna sell parts, you gotta sell all the parts. And if you're in a major city, I can see where you would specialize in just, you know, one brand of car or just Japanese cars or just Korean cars or whatever, but out here you gotta kinda specialize in everything. Looks like there's a few old ones mixed in though, so we'll see. If we find anything else that we can't live without. I've got three options for a souvenir so far. Another Rustang. If I was closer, I would definitely buy the side, or if I had my trailer with me, I'd talk about buying the side off of one of those. Probably that white 302 car. But what are these? Check out those rear bumpers. That's pretty cool. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. That's pretty far out there. Can't tell what they are. I guess we're gonna go explore through the weeds. I think they're Packards, but I could be wrong. Yeah, these are Packards. I don't think I've ever had a Packard quite like this though with those fancy bumpers. I mean, even look at the front bumper. And that front little grill down below, that's pretty funky right there. There's another Valiant. Does it have the cool trunk? Nope, not the cool trunk. So never mind. Got excited for a second because I like the color on that one. Being orange, that'd be way cooler than the white one, but that's okay. It's funny about it is the one that I have already is white too. But it's really rusty. So if I could get a nicer one to hang up, that'd be pretty cool. Hey, some more Lincolns and Cadillacs. What do you know? Some of these Cadillacs have Continental kits on them too. Of this funky body style. We crushed a salvage yard out in Newton one time that had one. And he said to crush it. And so we were going to pull the Continental kit off of it. And then some guy came in and bought it last second. We crushed a lot of good stuff out of there right before he went out of business. He just said, get it gone. 
crushed a whole bunch of barracudas. That's why I have a bunch of those glove boxes I was talking about earlier with the barracuda logo on them. He had a whole bunch of gremlins and pacers too that we crushed. Kind of a shame, but what do you do? Back in those days, we didn't save nothing hardly. Some good looking fin cars. Man, look at those fins. Check those fins out. That looks good. What are these, Chryslers? I think these are Chryslers. Yeah, Windsors, Chrysler Windsors. Buick wagon. There's a bunch more old cars over here. Let's go over here. I didn't see these yet. There's a 54 Chevy. Still has all the teeth in it. See, that's the sort of stuff that when I get it, it sells almost instantly, even in poor condition. And he's got several. He's got a 53 and then this 54 here. That is one vehicle that I part down to nothing is these 49 to 54 Chevy cars. But I've met a lot of people through the years that buy parts off of those, so it's pretty easy. Is that another Morris? He's got a whole bunch of Morrises. I guess those aren't rare down here. Huh. There's a bunch more old cars over there. I guess we missed a bunch of them. We'll squeeze through here and go check those out. Hey, so we're Lincolns. Bullet nose. That's the only bullet nose I've seen so far. I still kick myself for that big auction I went to late in the summer that had three of the Starlight Coupes. I wish so bad I would have bought those cars. At least the two that had all the glass in them still. Still can't believe I didn't do that. A bunch of Studebakers in here. He had a bunch out back and now there's a bunch more here. Man, I don't know what's driving by on the highway right now, but it is loud. Studebaker, he must have bought out a place that had a bunch of Studebakers. Maybe another salvage yard or something like that. Oh, there's another bullet nose. A lot of people gave me grief for that Studebaker cleanup that I did where I crushed them all. But man, those cars have been getting parted out since the 80s. They were stripped out to nothing. Another bullet nose. So I guess he had them all in one spot. I saved a bunch out of that place though. I'll, I'll put it this way. I save more than most crushers do. Most crushers, when they come into a place, they crush it all. They don't save nothing. So, I'm a crusher number one, but I do save stuff. So, and it's kind of like these guys are salvage number one, but they do crush stuff. Oldsmobiles. There's a wagon. Dynamic 88. These must all be pretty new arrivals. I wonder if he has any Windsor Deluxes. 51 or twos. Because I need a hood ornament for one of those pretty bad. Here's a, what's this? And what's it say? 328 Le Mans. It's kind of a cool car. It's definitely seen better days, but still a cool car. Packard Super. And a special. You guys saw that BMW I had like this that I got at the Mercedes cleanup. I did sell that car, so I didn't just crush them all like everybody thought I was going to. And I think this is the last of them that I haven't seen yet. And then we'll head up by the building and see what's up there and see if they're here yet. Looks like just a couple Fords. And this looks like the crusher pile, I'm guessing. See, now if I crush stuff like this, people will be like, there's all sorts of good parts on there still. <laughs> I crushed that square body or sent it to the claw the other day. And oh man, I got all sorts of grief for that, but it was it had less parts on it than that one does. Like I tell everybody, if the salvage guys ain't saving it, I ain't saving it. They must have somewhat recently crushed out because they got a bunch of empty space. And if they're anything at all like me, empty space doesn't last long. Now there's one you don't see that often anymore. Gremlin X. We've got a couple of those somewhere. Used to be one of those things you saw all the time, but evidently this in here is a little yard car. <laughs> That's kind of cool. What do they got on the inside of this thing? Some fancy gauges up there. There's an oldie but a goldie. Buick. Eight. Huh. Pretty cool. K car convertible. I have crushed 75 trillion of those things. <laughs> Don't see them anymore though. That's a neat old Ford. Here's a Cadillac. Now this is a cool one here. This is an old one. I've had a few of those, but 
sold them all already. What's about, oh, there's a sharp 59 or 60. I always get confused, like I said earlier. Huh. And another Lincoln. Surprise, surprise. Well, there's an international big truck. And of course it's their winch truck. <laughs> if it has a headlight ring on it, they might sell it anyway. We'll see. There's a Valiant or a Lancer convertible, or not convertible, a station wagon over there. There's a big Dodge ramp truck. Yeah, this is exactly what I need here. And of course, the headlight ring on this is good. Or decent anyway. And there's the other one. It looks like it's broken out. But it does have one good one on it. I'll ask and see. Probably not, but it's worth a try. And here's the Dodge Crew Cab that I saw when I pulled in. First thing caught my eye. Of course, now that I have my International, I may not build the Dodge unless I win the lottery. I don't even play the lottery, so I don't know how I'd win it. But if I did win it, I'd build both. But that's a lot of money, so I'll probably do the International instead of the Dodge just because it's so unusual and I, I really kind of fell in love with that truck. Check out this funky boat. I've had a few of these have the fins on them. Kind of really unique styling. That's a cool car there. Junk yard built. Well, I ended up buying everything I said I wanted. I bought the hood ornament, bought all these pieces here off that Packard. I got the deck lid off the Valiant, and they're working on pulling the headlight ring off the International right now. So I guess I was gonna pick out one of those things to take, and I ended up buying them all. Well, I am loaded up. I am headed out. It was definitely good to meet everybody, hang out with them, talk for a little while. Bought a few things. Definitely, if you saw, I guess not everything you saw in this video is for sale, like that Dodge Crew Cab that was way out back. All those cars in that area aren't for sale. And some of the other ones are projects of their own. But if you saw anything out in the rows or parts that you might need, definitely give Brown Auto Salvage a holler. He's a very busy man, so please be patient. If he doesn't answer, you can try again another time. But lots of cool stuff. Definitely check him out. I know I had a ton of fun exploring. I wish I had more time. I would have hung out a little bit longer, maybe bought a few more things. But I do have another antique salvage ride that I'm going to check out now. So that's where I'm hitting the road. It's about a two and a half, three hour drive to get there. That will be on a separate video though, so stay tuned for that one. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to my channel because I want to be getting into going and exploring more places like this. Plus I'll always be doing stuff at my yard, farm cleanups, you never know what I'm gonna be doing next. I've got a long drive ahead of me, so I'm gonna go ahead and end this one out. 
As always, I hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. And remember to get out there, find yourself an adventure. We'll see you next time.